So next, we're going to talk about the two random variable cases. So let's recap what we have learned. So we have covered the expected value or we call it mean. So the expected value is just the value of the y multiplied the probability. Then plus the second value of the y times the probability of the second value. Then we add up all the probabilities and the value of y's. After that, we can calculate the expected values. So we can also say this is the mu y, representing this is the mean of y. Also, we have covered the concept of variance. So the variance has this form, expected value of the value of y minus the mu y, then we square it. So before we go to two variable cases, so you need to learn one more concept called covariance. So covariance of x and y. It can be calculated by expected value of x minus mu of x times y minus mu of y. Okay, so this simply the joint probability that x equal to xi and y equal to yi times the x minus the expected value of x and expected value of y. So later we will have some exercise to show how can we apply this covariance formula. So next we talk about the concept of independence. So what is the meaning of independence? Independence means that, so if we say that x and y are independent, that means that the probability of the y equal to some value given x equal to x is exactly equal to the probability that y equal to y. So this shows that x has no efficient information in affecting the probability of y. That's why we call this independence. So there are many, many uh, further definitions of independence. So take, let's take some examples. So if we say that x and y are independent, and we can say that the probability that y equal to some sort of value and x equal to some sort of value equal to the probability that y equal to that value multiply that probability that y equal to that value why because for the conditional probability we know that we have a form like john's probability divided by the marginal probability okay so with the independence we can say that we can see that then we can multiply the probability x equal to x to the right hand side. So we move this to the right hand side. As a result, we can see that probability x equal to x multiply the probability y equal to y is equal to the joint probability. Okay, so we have further definitions. So if they are independent, we can say that the covariance between x and y is equal to zero so next i'm going to prove that y if x and y are independent the covariance is equal to zero okay so covariance of x and y is equal to expected value of x minus ex times y minus ey so it is equal to Submission of i equal to 1 to l. Submission of j from 1 equal to k. x i minus e x times y j minus e y. Multiply by the joint probability x equal to x i and y equal to y j. Okay, I just rewrite the expected value of x and y in the joint the joint probability and we write the x to be xi then add the summation term so since i assume x and y are independent so we can rewrite the joint probability to be the multiplication of the marginal probability that means we keep the first terms and the second term is equal to probability x equal to xi times probability y equal to yj due to independent properties next we can separate x and y okay 
So for the first term, I take out the x component, x i minus e x times the probability that x equal to x i. So we do the same things for the y. I take out the summation sign for the y, then take out the value of y times the probability that y equal to yj. Okay. Here we can see that probability of x equal to xi times the value of xi. So it means so this is equal to expected value of x. Then the probability x equal to xi times the expected value of x, it is still expected value of x. So this is the left hand side. So we can do the same things for the right hand side. Expected value of y equal to yj multiplied by yj, that is ey minus the probability times ey is still ey. Then we can see that this is in fact 0 multiplied by 0. So we complete the proof. So this explains why if x and y are independent, the covariance is equal to 0. So next, we go to the two random variable cases. So you have a bunch of relation between two random variables you need to know or you need to know how to derive it. So at the simplest case, expected value of x plus expected value of y. So this is equal to expected value of x plus expected value of y. Or we can say this is mu x plus mu y. Next is the variance. Variance of x plus variance of, of y uh, no, variance of x plus y is not just equal to variance of x plus variance of y. So you need to add another term to be the two covariance of x and y. So this is the definitions of the expected value and variance of two random variables. Next, let's explore further the relation between two random variables. First, if I want to calculate the expected value of a plus b x plus c y, so assume a, b, c are the constant, x and y are the random variables. So this is just equal to expected value of a. Expected value of a constant is a constant. Then, plus expected value of b x, right? So since b is a constant, we can take out here, and what is remaining is expected value of e x. Finally. The expected value of cy, since c is a, is a constant, we can take out, then finally we just need to add the expected value terms to the y. So this is the expected value of the a plus bx plus cy, okay, for expected value we, just, we can just separate it one by one. Second, how about the variance of a plus by, so this is equal to b squared times the variance of y. So now I'm going to prove it. Okay. So variance of a plus b y by definition, this is equal to expected value of a plus b y minus the expected value of a plus b y and the whole term we square it. So this is the definition of variance as we as we, we remember that okay variance of y is expected value of y minus e y and square it right okay next we are going to break the bracket so this is equal to a plus b y minus expected value of a constant is the constant then expected value of b y is equal to b expected value of y then the whole term we square it okay so a and a here can be cancelled so what is remains is expected value of b y minus e y then the whole term squared okay then 
expected value of a constant times the variable. The constant can be taken out since b you need to square it. What is remains is a b squared times the expected value of y minus e y squared. So what is this? This is just variance of y. So we complete the proof. Next, this is much more difficult. Variance of ax plus by, this is equal to a square times the variance of x plus b square times the variance of y times 2ab the covariance of x and y. So this is, this is some sort similar to the expansion of ax plus by square term. This is because variance you need to insert some square term concept. So how to prove it? So we know that variance of ax plus by by definition this is equal to expected value of ax plus by minus expected value of ax plus by and the whole term square it. Again, try to break the bracket. What we can get is that ax plus by minus a expected value of x minus b expected value of y Okay, next we try to separate x and y. What we can get is a x minus e x plus b y minus e y. And don't forget the whole term we have a square. Okay, next you are going to solve this quadratic equations. So how to expand the bracket in the quadratic equations? This term squared it, plus 2 times this term times these terms. Finally, this term squared it. So what you will get is a squared x minus 2x squared plus 2ab x minus expected value of x, y minus expected value of y. Finally, plus b squared times y minus expected value of y squared. Okay, again, applying the sum rule, expected value of sum rule, expected value of two, two variables, just separate. So here, you have three stuff, first term, second term, third term. Then you can separate one by one. Okay, so expected value of a squared times this kind of stuff, it, you can take out the constant here first, then expected value of x minus e x squared. This is just variance of x. So the last part is also the same. You can take out the constant term y minus e y whole term squared. This is variance of y. So what is the middle one? So 2ab is the constant which can be taken out. So this, what is this? So this is just the definition of covariance, right? x minus e x times y minus e y. Therefore, we prove that this is equal to the covariance of x, y, right? We have just shown that the definition of covariance is an expected value of x minus e x times y minus e y. So this is exactly the same. Okay, so this shows that variance of ax plus by is equal to this term. So next, let's go further. So last few relations, expected value of y square is not just equal to the square of expected value, you still need to add the variance of y. So how to prove it? So in economics, improving some things, sometimes you need to apply some mathematical trick. So here, you need, what you need to do is to minus the expected value of y plus the expected value of y. So you minus something and add something, keeping everything unchanging. Okay, so you just minus ey then plus ey here, then keep the square term. So next step, you will separate it one by one. No, 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 separate at two groups. First term, y minus ex squared plus 
2 times the first term and the second term. So there's 2 times EY that multiply the expected value of Y minus EY. Okay, finally. The third term, square of the third term. Okay, again, I just try to expand the quadratic equation here. So I separate this as the first term and the second term. So first term square it, plus two times the first term and second term. Finally, square the last term. Okay, what is the first term? Expected value of y minus the expected value of y, the whole term square. This is the definition of the variance. What is the last term? So you can see that this is just square of expected value, right? So I keep it. How about the middle one? Okay, you can see that expected value of the y minus ey. So here, this is just ey minus ey. So this is equal to zero. So this is something multiplied by zero, this is zero. So you can ignore it. That's what we get. Expected value of y squared. It is simply equal to the variance of y plus the square of the average. Okay. So next, the covariance of a plus b, x plus c, v, and y equal to this term. a, b, c are the constant, x, v, and y are the variables. So, how to prove it? So you just need to apply the definition of covariance here. So the definition of covariance is the first term a plus b x plus z v minus the expected value of the first term. Multiply the y minus e y the second term. All right. If you forget the definition of covariance, just we cap it. So next, break the bracket. A here, expected for A here, you can be cancelled. So what is remain is B X minus E X plus C V minus E V. So this is the first term. The second term is we keep it. Y minus E Y. Then we group it one by one. The first term B X minus E X group with the Y minus E Y. Then the second term C V minus E V group with the second term Y minus E Y. Then here we can see that. This is equal to expected value of some constant times this. What is this? This is the definition of covariance between x and y. This is the definition between covariance between v and y. So what we get is b covariance x y plus c covariance of v and y. Done. Finally, the expected value of x times y. This is equal to the covariance of x and y plus ex times e y so this is similar to the expected of y square expected value of y square ju is just expected value of y times y so we should have similar structure here so try to prove it expected value of x and y first we do some trick x minus e x plus e x times y minus e y plus e y again we apply the sum and minus operations next so we separate the first group here then we do the multiplication inter intercross the x and y this term times this term the second group is this term times this terms Next is this term times this terms. Finally, ex times ey. Okay, so what we get is expected value of x minus ex, y minus ey, plus 
plus expected value of x times expected value of y minus e y plus expected value of y times expected value of x minus e y finally plus e x times e y again expected of y minus e y is zero expected of x minus e x is as again zero so what is remaining is this term covariance between x and y plus e x times e y and we complete the proof okay so before we end this chapter let's talk about the distribution of the sample average y bar <clears throat> so y bar is just the average between y1 2 up to yn so in econometrics we usually assume that we draw the sample from the populations and we assume iid distribution of the sample this iid means identical and independent distribution that means no matter what sample we draw they share the same distribution mean and the variance okay so for example assume there are four populations every time you randomly draw two of them to be our sample to study the distribution will share the same mean and the average so if we want to draw this all the individual samples maybe we draw the two population one by one we have n times so we can have some distribution between the y bar here so what is the mean of the y bar so this is just equal to y1 plus y2 up to yn then you divide by n so the expected value of y bar is just this so what is expected value of y1 y2 y3 up to yn so this is just equal to n times the expected value of y right you have n number of y1 y2 and yt up to yn so n and n can be cancelled what is remaining is just the mu y the second we talk about what is the variance of y bar so again try to rewrite the y bar as y1 plus y2 up to dot 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 yn divided by n so based on the variance rule anything attached to the y can be taken out and you need to square it so we take out the 1 over n here and we get 1 over n square then times the variance of y1 plus y2 up to yn okay so we keep this so we have n of the y here so n times the variance of y since they are iid so we can ignore all the covariance between y1 and y2 y1 and y3 up to every other terms so here we can see that the variance of y bar is just variance of y divided by n so this is the property saying that okay if i add more and more sample the n increase the variance of y bar can reduce to zero so this is one type of the special property of y bar